In this topology, switch SW1 is a multi-layer switch. It's capable of doing routing. And I want to show you a couple of different ways that we can configure switch SW1 to do routing. One way is through the use of SVIs, switch virtual interfaces. This is where we have a logical interface, a VLAN interface that we just create out of thin air. And that logical interface is where we assign the IP address that will be used as the default gateway's IP address for the devices connected to ports belonging to that VLAN. For example, on screen we have a PC, PC1, connected into fast ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 1. That's a member of VLAN 10. What we can do is create an SVI for VLAN 10, give it an IP address of 192.168.1.1, with a 24-bit subnet mask, and then on PC1 we point to that IP address as our default gateway. In PC2 it belongs to VLAN 20, we'll create another SVI for VLAN 20, and this is one of the unique things about a switch as compared to a router. On a switch we can have multiple ports all belonging to the same VLAN to the same subnet, but on a router usually each interface is on its own subnet, its own VLAN. But on a switch if we have lots of ports and they all belong to the same VLAN, that might be a great opportunity to use an SVI. Let's see how to create a couple of SVIs on the switch and then confirm that we can route between PC1 and PC2. On switch SW1, before we configure anything, let's do a show VLAN just to confirm VLAN memberships. Fast Ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 1, to which PC1 is attached, that belongs to VLAN 10. Fast Ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 2, that belongs to VLAN 20. Let's go into global configuration mode and let's create, out of thin air, let's create a switch virtual interface. I'll say interface VLAN 10. We just created a virtual interface and we're allowed to assign an IP address to this virtual interface. You cannot assign an IP address to a regular switch port, but you can to a switch virtual interface. Let's give it the IP address we see on screen. We'll say IP address. 192.168.1.1 with a 24-bit subnet mask. Let's do another one for VLAN 20. We'll say interface VLAN 20 IP address 172.16.1.1 with a 24-bit subnet mask. There's one other thing we have to do though. Just because I've created these switch virtual interfaces, this does not yet mean that switch SW1 is going to route between these interfaces. We have to make sure that IP routing is enabled. Let's go back into global configuration mode and say IP routing. Now we should be able to route between these interfaces. To confirm that, let's go over to PC1 and let's do a ping. Let's see if we can ping from PC1 to PC2. They're in different subnets. If this ping works, that's going to tell us that switch SW1 is routing between these SVIs. Let's do a ping to 172.16.1.2. It is successful. Again, we don't need to worry about that first dot. That was a timeout due to ARP. PC1 was looking up the MAC address of its default gateway. If I do a subsequent ping, we'll get 100% success. Can PC2 ping back to PC1? Let's try it. We'll say ping 192.168.1.2. That is successful as well. And that's a great way to route between different VLANs on a switch. However, this switch, since it is acting somewhat like a router, it's doing routing, it might need to connect out to another router. Just as one router connects to another router, if you have a point-to-point -point link between two routers, you only need a couple of IP addresses, one for each side of the link. So you might use a 30-bit subnet mask. Let's say that we wanted to connect switch SW1 up to R1. One way of doing that is we could create another VLAN, create another SVI, assign that SVI this IP address of 10.1.1.1 slash 30. But in a case like this, this is a great fit to make that port, fast ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 24, to make that port not a switch port, but a routed port. A port that acts like a router port, a port to which we can directly assign an IP address. Here's how we transform a switch port into a routed port. Let's go back to switch SW1. And before we convert it, I just want to prove to you that we cannot enter an IP address in a switch port. Let's go into interface fast ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 24. And let's say IP address 10.1.1.1. 
and we'll give a 30-bit subnet mask. This will fail. We're just showing this to illustrate the point that you cannot assign an IP address to a switch port. This command is not even recognized, you'll see. How do we fix this? To make this switch port into a routed port, we simply say no switch port. We can give that same IP address command again, and now it's accepted. In fact, if I do a show IP interface brief on this switch, we'll see that I have an IP address assigned to VLAN 10, to VLAN 20, and also I have one assigned to fast Ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 24. It's not a switch port, it's now a routed port. And as a result, I should be able to ping from PC1 up to R1's fast Ethernet 0 slash 1 interface. Let's try. Let's go to PC1 and let's do a ping to 10.1.1. Dot two, and we have success. We are now able to route between SVIs, and we're also able to route between an SVI and a routed port on switch SW1 acting as our multi-layer switch.